Hello, welcome to National 5 Computing Science and the User Interface. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to describe what's meant by an interface, state what an HCI is, explain the difference between a command line interface and a GUI, and describe and give examples of when multimedia may be used in an application or a web page. So, so far we've already um, covered, or you may have already covered, that an interface with regards to a system is a boundary across which pieces of hardware communicate. Well, a user interface is the same kind of thing. It's the thing where a human, or the user, is using a computer system. And this can be software, or it can be hardware. What you'll see here is a screenshot of one of my very first computers in the mid to late 1980s, um, a Commodore 664. Now, that, this is what they call a command line ent interface. You had to type in every, every command, word perfect, no graphical use user icons, um, that was just the interface of the time. Whereas if we look at a modern, here's a screenshot of my desktop at home, um, this is what they call a GUI, a GUI, a graphical user interface. Now this may sometimes be referred to as a WIMP system, but more about that in a little, a little bit. What you'll see is that there's little icons there that the user can select and interact with to perform various operations and functions. Now, each has their advantages. Um, for example, I can only talk about a Windows machine, but if you ever tried to copy a huge amount of files on a modern Windows machine, say a few few hundred, hundred files, and there's an error such as one file being corrupted, um, one file accidentally being used, or anything else, um, and it just stops the entire, the entire op operation, or you've got to go and prompt individual files to overwrite, not, not overwrite. Well, with a command line interface, you have one added advantage. If you look at this command, um, down here, what you'll see is, is that's a command there, this X copy. That's what they call the parameters, so we're copying everything from the C drive to the F drive. And these flags here means that it ignores any failed files and automatically ignores the message to overwrite files. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there's no easy way of doing that using a standard um, GUI. So, although command line interfaces are far more difficult to remember, they do offer you a lot more power, a lot more operations, a lot more functionality. When you compare this to the GUI on the same machine, what you'll see is we've got um, windows, we've got some icons, we've got menus, and we've got a pointer some, somewhere. So you can interact, the, the recycle bin where all your deleted files go looks like a bin. That that's, um, will be mentioned later, later on. Now, which is easier to use? Well, it probably is uh, a, a GUI. It would be easier to use. However, the one that would allow you more control over what you're doing is probably a command line in interface. It offers far more functionality. It offers far more control. However, that does come at a price. It's, they're far more, it's far more challenging to use, which means that a command line is usually going to be used by your, your, your expert use, user audience. So as we kind of already alluded to, the HCI is the way in which the user and the computer communicate. And it's primarily the HCI which can determine how easy a program is to use. Remember, programs are written to solve a problem. The user should be concentrating on how to solve the problem, not how to use the software. And we will look into the various factors that comes into the uh, positive use user experience. Intuition can be defined as the ability to understand something instinctively. If you design an intuitive interface, then you should be able to use it with very little or no training. So for example, I mean the recycle bin, you don't have to be a computer genius to work out that that's probably where your deleted file goes. Why? Because it looks like a bin, you put rubbish in the bin, so it's kind of intuitive that, that all your deleted files would go in there. Now why is it an advantage? If your software is intuitive, if it is easy to use, people are more likely to buy it and use it, hence increase your profitability if it, if, if it was a purchasable piece of software. We're also going to look at um, multimedia, just as a small, a small kind of int introduction, we'll cover much more later on. But multimedia can be described as a, the combination of multiple media types, such as text, sound graphics, that's still graphics, and animated, and also video. Now, when can you use sound in a program? Well, can you use it for feedback? For example, if, some, if somebody gets something right, you can applaud them. It could be used for background music. 
apologies for the volume, but remember though that too much background music can be a bad feature. So we'll cover that later on, but be wary of that. Now accessibility we will cover later on, but particularly for your, your, your youth users that may have some form of visual impairment, um, dyslexia, reading difficulties, you can use audio feedback where the text on your screen or on your application is actually read to the user. But remember though, the music and sounds can become distracting unless they're used properly. Tutorial videos, so I mean we've already used this one in, in, in class, they allow distance learning, which is what you're doing now. Okay, you can learn at your own pace. It's much easier to show practical skills. And you can also use them for game cut sequences as well. Graphics, well you can use them for visual prompts. Avatars, okay there's a rough little version of me. You can use them in games, social media for your Facebook account, for your Twitter pro profile, etc. For your Xbox. Um, you can customise your background, your desktop, your phones, your tablets. And also a picture can sell, can sell, can sell, can tell a thousand words, okay. But there is still a place for good old-fashioned text, okay? You can issue instructions, confirmations, questions and error messages, um, text captions. So you might provide an image and put a piece of text underneath it, 